since this outbreak started, our experts were advising countries um, to have a comprehensive package of interventions to stop the virus. Um, what are the merits of, of those comprehensive measures, in your opinion, versus lockdowns and, and other measures that countries are taking? Yeah, so lockdowns have been used increasingly as a way to combat this virus, but they're not a solution in the sense that they actually don't make the virus go away. They suppress the virus, but they're not sustainable. It's a very crude and short-term policy instrument you can use while you try to build your public health infrastructure, get your package of interventions ready to go, and then you can release the lockdown knowing that you have some safety net in terms of other interventions that can suppress the virus and so I think that's been exactly right. You know, the core package of interventions we're now seeing revolve around, you know, a test, trace, isolate, you know, um, support strategy where you actually um, are aggressively going after the virus. I mean, as, as Dr. Tedros has been saying, you know, test, test, test. You have to know where the virus is, otherwise you're flying blind. Also what revolves around real-time data systems and surveillance to rapidly identify clusters of cases Added to that, you know, paying attention to where this virus transmits very easily. This is around hospitals and care homes, prisons, basically indoor facilities where you have many people close together and often vulnerable people. Um, another one is actually looking at, you know, trying to this go towards some kind of new normal in the sense of having people work from home if they can, rethinking workspaces, um, mask using masks as needed, especially on public transport or during you know, um, you being in shops or crowded facilities. And um, so I think this is where, you know, a lot of countries are now arriving at, which is how do we get that package, which means we can lift lockdowns because these are not sustainable for economic reasons, um, for, for social reasons. And we don't want the, you know, lockdowns to create more suffering and more death than the virus itself. Thank you, Debbie. Um, what do you, um, looking forward, um, after one day we, we, are out of this pandemic, um, what are the lessons that we need to take from, from this experience and be ready for future to, to keep the world safe? So I think there's, I'll say kind of three lessons that I hope in some sense will come away with this. The first is actually that our health challenges are interconnected. So what is happening in a remote part of a country somewhere else across the globe might feel very far away but given we have planes and bugs travel far and fast, um, especially respiratory um, pathogens, that just to be aware of how closely our world is intertwined, even though it may not feel like that sometimes. I think the second one is about overreacting or reacting early. Um, I think there was a lot of fear about, oh no, we're gonna make a bigger deal of this and people being accused of spreading panic or creating fear. It's always better to overreact you know, prevent something from happening. And then later on, if people blame you saying, oh, you overreacted, it wasn't a big deal, it means actually your prevention worked. You stopped something from happening. So I think all the incentives should be to be more alarmed and less alarmed. Um, I think the third one is about the role of essential workers and scientists and health workers, um, often the basic building blocks of societies, people like cleaners, delivery drivers, um, people who pick up rubbish, um, you know, nurses, doctors, journalists, um, scientists, these kind of essential roles are forgotten and undervalued. And I hope that, you know, people around the world will realize actually how important these types of jobs and careers are for, um, you know, for a successful society.